Yes, two years ago, before the 2013 Israeli elections, the Yeshati party was grasping only 11 seats in the polls. But on election day, the party became the biggest surprise of the elections, winning 19 seats and getting the party leader, Yair Lapid, a spot as finance minister. Now, two days before yet another vote, polls show a similar result as before, around 11 to 12 seats. But can Lapid repeat history? Leader of the Yeshati party, Yair Lapid, joining me tonight here in the studio. Good evening. Thank you very much. For Good evening. So, um, can you repeat? Well, I, um, we hope so. Uh, hope, uh, we hope so. I, I'm not getting into it because you know what? I was also surprised in the last election. So I, I've learned my lesson of not making any projections. Just do the hard work. Make sure you you talk to anyone you can. You know, sometimes I, I'm finish, I finished a couple of days ago. I was in Beersheba. I did a whole big thing. There were a thousand people came. And then we had a meeting of the local uh, activists. And then I went home at like, I don't know, one o'clock in the morning. I'm going to uh, put gas into my car. And then I'm stuck at the yellow thing with the guy with the orange hat for 45 minutes convincing him to, to vote for Yeshatid. So this is the way I operate. This is the way I work. I go from one person to another explaining to them what I did, how I worked from them, for them in these past two years, and what I want to do for them in the future. This is the only way I know how to run a campaign. Mr. Lapid, what were your mistakes in the last two years? Well, well I think in the first few months, uh, we were, it was a bit confusing, you know, going into politics uh, and then all of a sudden becoming, as you described, the finance minister with this big party behind me. And I think we were a bit arrogant at the time and uh, we didn't listen enough. So we made a lot of mistakes. We've learned from each and one of them and we've learned a lesson in modesty. Because I will tell you, because I will tell you, for me, it was very like natural that you will be the um, a foreign minister that okay. you will go and you will represent Israel, maybe uh, build, rebuild the relationship between Israel and, the, and other countries uh, in the international arena. And when you took the finance uh, ministry, it, it's, I said to myself, ha it's going to be a trap because it seems like someone put him in the place that he yeah, thinks that, that he cannot do it and he obviously won't do it. Did yeah, everybody that knew that, only... including me. Listen, I read the same papers you did at the time. And, and uh, uh, I rem you know, I remember 10 days after I got the, the spot of the finance minister, I gathered my, my, my political stuff at my home very late at night, and I told them, I said, listen, I want to prepare you for something. I'm going to move within a month from the most popular politician in Israel, which I was for five fantastic seconds uh, after the election, well, to, to, the, to, become, to become the person everybody's really angry on. And because we're going to take some very hard measures in order to fix the Israel economy. And they said the same with you. I said, so why are we doing this? And I said, because we went to elections saying we're going to take responsibility. In all those places, people were trying not to take responsibility. And taking responsibility is not having a press conference. Taking responsibility is make, taking all the hard steps that nobody wants to take and do the unpopular things nobody wants to do and, you know, getting the hit for it. But when I came into office, we had a 40 billion shekel deficit. The, the, the deficit was going up, the unemployment went up, people lost their jobs. And when I left the office, everything was fixed or almost fixed. The, the cost of living really? is, too, is way too you high, but I'm taking mac macro able numbers. able to fix things in two years? Yeah, no, we could. I mean, there was no 40 billion shekel deficit. There was no deficit actually was 2.6 when I left. Unemployment was 5.6, which is the lowest in many in, in years. We have, you know, we were on a Greek-like uh, uh, scen uh, scenario, and we moved it back to, to a, a solid working economy. But we didn't succeed or we didn't have ti enough time to accomplish the, all the things we wanted, which is especially lowering the, the cost of living and the cost of housing. And all the great things we, ha we did have in the 2015 budget that passed government, then passed first calling Knesset, and then it was also all got stuck when Netanyahu decided to go to this election that seemed useless at the time. But if he won't be in his office on, on Wednesday morning, then it was all worthwhile. What do you think about him? Well, that's personally, personally, he's a very intelligent man. Uh, I don't. I, th minister. I don't think he should be the prime minister of Israel. Not because he's right wing. Not because he's Likud. Because he doesn't care anymore.
I don't know what happened, what was, how was it before, because it didn't work with him. You want the people who work for you, the leadership of the state of Israel, to be people who deeply care about what happened with the citizens and with the state of the country. I don't think he cares anymore. The only thing he really cares about is his own political survival. And this is not a good enough incentive to, to govern. And therefore, I think he should be replaced. You know, I'm trying to think, because in the last elections, when you came in and you were just like a fresh politician, maybe in one way or another, and I'm trying to analyze it, you didn't want to touch the, let's say, the diplomatic arena. You didn't want to touch the Israeli-Palestinian mm -hmm. relationship and uh, the peace process. And now it seems that it's really important. And when we are talking about maybe a united government at the end of the day on Wednesday morning, Will you be able to sit down in a government again with uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, knowing that he is not willing to go anywhere with the Palestinians? Listen, first of all, I was involved. Uh, maybe I wasn't allowed, but I was part of the uh, security cabinet, and I was also part of the negotiation team. And uh, I was involved in every detail of the uh, unsuccessful negotiation uh, uh, round we had with the Palestinians. Let me remind you, the ones to be blamed for, for the, the fact that it's unsuccessful was the Palestinians. Uh, uh, President Abbas is the one who went to the White House and told uh, President Obama that he's not going to accept uh, Kerry's framework uh, agreement. And still, I, w I was there. I, I, I didn't feel the necessity to, be, to, be, to make myself visible on this. Uh, because other people were involved. But if you ask Tsipi Livnius in a different party, she will tell you I was a partner uh, uh, in all of on all, taking all these how, steps. How do you see it? How do you I see, see it? I think we have, we have exhausted the bilateral uh, uh, pass, and what we should do is go for a regional agreement. The Arab League is gathering in the end of uh, uh, this month, actually, in, in Sharm el-Sheikh. General Sisi, for the first time, is, is going to lead the Arab lead, League. And I th if it wasn't for the Israel election, I would have demanded that it will be there, starting to negotiate with the Arab League, the Palestinian Authority is part of the Arab League, on a separation agreement with the Palestinians. If they want to call it the Palestinian state on the other side of the defense, the security fence, fine by me. What we need is to separate with them. And what is important to me is the security measurements, because what is important to me is the security of uh, Israeli citizens. You have, I believe that you have some scenarios for the yes. day after. Do you think that uh, this regional agreement that you're talking about, because we heard Benjamin Netanyahu mm -hmm. talking about it after Operation Protective Edge, do, do you think that this regional agreement is something that Benjamin Netanyahu can actually well, I'm not going to analyze him. I, I don't think he's going to do anything. I think um, he's paralyzed by his political needs and unwillingness to work. Not, it's not, he's a hardworking man, but he doesn't want to do anything, as I was saying, because he doesn't care. So, so I don't think he's going to go there. Uh, there. There is a reason I'm saying Tuesday should be the last day of, of Benjamin Netanyahu as prime minister. Uh, I'm trying not to make this into a personal matter, because it is not. But I think the country needs a path. We tend to forget the idea of governing is to make people's life better. This is basically it. But you know, the, being in government, it's not a, it's not a purpose. Being having a position is not a purpose. Politics is just uh, I don't know an uh, administrational tool in order to improve the life of people. And leading by example means that you go and work every day very hard for the people who voted for you. When this is not happening, you're not doing your job. So I will ask you before we're finishing. We have less than a minute. Uh... When you're going to sleep, are you fantasizing or dreaming about the fact that you will be one day the prime minister? I didn't sleep for in a long, long time, so, <laughs> so I cannot answer you this question. You know what? You talked about the mistakes I did. One of the mistakes, the mistakes I did was saying, you know, I'm going to be prime minister. This is arrogant. This is, it's not for me to decide. It's for the people of Israel to decide. So uh, uh, I, I will be in any position that they will send me to be in, and I will work in whatever work they will send me to do. Yair Lapid, thank you very, very, much, you very much for coming much. to our studio, and I hope that you will get some sleep next week. Not this next week, Wednesday. Next week. Wednesday, you know, Wednesday yeah, next week. My PR people told me, if somebody asks you what you're going to do on Wednesday, you have to tell them I'm going to wake up very early and go to work for the people of Israel. I said, yes, but I'm going to sleep on Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday, I'm going to wake up and work sleep very hard it. for the people sleep of Israel. It. Of course, we will talk with you, I believe, after the elections. Thank you very much, thank and you. good luck. Pleasure. Good luck. Thank, thank, you. thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight. Tomorrow, we will be here at the same time, same place from the Jaffa Port, Israel. Have a great Thank you.